Our last lesson left Elon Musk traveling to Mars at the age of at least 60. This is a best case scenario. Elon today is 50 years old and he is starting to experience some of the normal changes of aging. Will he be physically unable to help colonize the red planet if he gets there in his mid 60s or even 70s? There are weak points in the human body Walking upright is relatively new for our species. The human spine is not straight. To add a spring effect for shock absorption, there is an S-curve that starts just under the skull, shaping the cervical vertebra, and leading into the thoracic, then flexes back the other way and on into the lumbar spine, curving again into the sacrum, which becomes fused with our vestigial tail into the coccyx. These vertebra are numbered. There are seven in the neck giving us C1 through seven. There are 12 in the thoracic spine giving us T1 through 12. There are five in the lumbar spine, L1 to L5, and five in the sacral spine, though these become fused in adults, and we mainly talk about S1. In between these vertebra are discs. These discs are like rubber shock absorbers with a leather outer layer. The center is called the nucleus pulposus, and the outer layer is called the annulus fibrosus. The leather-like part attaches the vertebra together and allows the spine to flex and extend. An animal will have a spine like a Roman arch bridge. This provides flexibility and strength. This could be called a lateral suspension. The weight of the human body is stacked. We will call this axial support. This constant flexing of the spine puts stress on weak points. The two weakest parts of the human spine are first the lumbar area, especially here at L4, L5, and S1. By the age of 30, these discs have started to lose a little height. The spinal cord travels in a canal behind these vertebrae and discs, and nerves to the body come out on each side between these vertebrae. When the discs lose enough height, the upper vertebra can impinge upon the nerves coming out to the sides. The nerve roots of the lower back come together to form the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve provides motor control from the brain to the leg and receives sensation signals from the leg, sending it on up to the brain. If the nerve roots in the lower back are compressed, they will start to send false signals up to the brain. This will cause the person to feel pain in their legs, even though the leg is fine and it can activate the muscles, causing spasms and cramping. This is called sciatica, because the pain distribution follows the sciatic nerve. Elon Musk recently apologized for not being completely focused during an interview with the everyday astronaut because of back pain. This may be what he is experiencing. The neck vertebra can suffer from this also. The nerve roots in the neck provide motor control and sensation to the arms and hands. Compression of the nerve roots here will cause pain in the arms and hands to be reported to the brain. An inversion table, tilted to about 20 degrees and used 15 minutes twice a day, should be the first step to help slow this process. The reverse gravity can help the disc recover a little. As we age, the density of our bones starts to deteriorate also. We develop a condition called osteopenia, or thinning bones. And finally, osteoporosis, or weak bones. This can cause the vertebra to collapse completely. They can do this symmetrically or in a wedge-shaped pattern. This can cause abnormal permanent curvature of the spine. By the time someone has reached their 60s, their bones are not as strong as they were when they were 40 or even 50. There is also muscle loss, called sarcopenia. Bone and muscle loss can be slowed and even reversed with weight training, but no heavy squats or deadlifts past the age of 40 you are risking serious damage to the lumbar vertebra. Another problem is the connective tissue. Tendons hold muscle to bone, ligaments hold bone to bone, fascia holds everything together. These tissues are made of protein. When we are young, these connective tissues are flexible. As we age, chemicals start to infiltrate these tissues, things like sugar, and can cause links to form between the proteins, making them harden like old leather. They become stronger and stiffer, it's much harder to dislocate a shoulder as an adult, but much less flexible and elastic. A child can have a dislocation and heal very well, 
An adult who dislocates a shoulder will have torn muscles and tendons in the process, almost always requiring surgery later. Now that we are more fragile, stiff, and weak than we were when we were younger, what else do we have to look forward to? When we are developing, the body makes stem cells. At first, these stem cells can become anything. These are called pluripotent. Later, these stem cells become dedicated to a certain type of tissue. Muscle, bone, blood, skin, or nerve. But a cell cannot divide forever. When a stem cell is first activated, it has a long string of repeating DNA sequences at the end of the DNA strands. These are called telomeres. To divide and produce a new cell, this DNA is unwrapped and copied. But in this process, some of the repeating sequences on the ends are snipped off. After about 15 divisions for most cells, they have used up all the telomeres and start cutting into functional DNA. This is called the Hayflick limit. Once this is reached, the cell will function as long as it can, but when it dies, it cannot replace itself. Reduced availability of stem cells is one of the many causes of aging. When we are a developing fetus, there is an enzyme called telomerase that can put these repeat sequences back on DNA. That's so that we can go from one cell to trillions without using up all of our telomeres. But once we have become a fully functional human being, this telomerase goes away. We might try to reactivate it, but that causes a problem. Cancer cells become immortal because they reactivate telomerase. Reactivating telomerase in an adult can lead to cancer. When cells can no longer divide, they become senescent, doing the best they can until some problem wipes them out. These low functioning or senescent cells are another major cause of aging. When a cell detects that it has become dysfunctional, it will usually send out a signal marking itself for destruction by immune cells called natural killer cells. When a cell becomes dysfunctional and does not self-destruct, it absorbs resources but does nothing useful, furthering the aging process. When a dysfunctional cell reactivates its telomerase, we again have cancer. The next problem is with the powerhouses of the cell. Mitochondria are the ancient remnants of free-living bacteria that were ingested by some early single-celled organism and survived inside of it detoxifying oxygen and providing energy for the ingesting cell. You get pretty much all of your mitochondria from your mother. That is because the large human ovum has thousands of mitochondria, while the sperm only have a few. These mitochondria have their own DNA that is stored in a plasmid or a ring. Over billions of years, mitochondria lost the DNA to make supplies that our cells make for them. They are now dependent on our cells. These mitochondria can divide and multiply if we need more energy. This is one of the benefits of exercise. Our cells, however, make a DNA repair enzyme to correct errors if copying, radiation, or chemicals cause damage to our DNA. This enzyme stays in the nucleus of the cell. Mitochondria stay in the cytoplasm of the cell, and mitochondria don't make a DNA repair enzyme. When mitochondria are damaged, they can signal to be taken apart. If this fails, the dysfunctional mitochondria can multiply, filling the cell with low-functioning energy plants. These cells then also become low-functioning, absorbing resources, without providing much benefit to the body. Another cause of aging. In the early days of space travel, there will be lots of radiation exposure, speeding up the risk of cancer, and accelerating stress on the body, which usually speeds up the aging process. So even if Elon Musk does his weightlifting, yoga, and cardio, something like most of us, I'm not sure he makes a priority, he will still be putting his older body through very high stress to live on Mars. This all sounds like his dreams are hopeless, but they are not. There are advantages to space travel for the aged. When we go into space and live in zero gravity for a while, we get taller. The discs in the spine, not being constantly compressed by gravity, expand and repair themselves to a degree. It also turns out that high-intensity intermittent exercise is better for you than constant exercise. That's why long-distance runners look like this, while sprinters look like this. Having a centrifuge to provide artificial gravity on the ship, as well as frequent weight-bearing exercise, could actually help restore function to an aging body and reverse some of the skeletal changes of aging. There are also medications, like Reclast, that inhibit the bone-destroying cells called osteoclasts, allowing the bone building cells, called osteoblasts, to strengthen the bones. 
The eight-month journey to Mars could have the older Elon feeling better than he had in years. There is also evidence that plants exposed to space radiation produce chemicals to protect themselves from the damaging effects of this radiation. If humans use these plants in their diet, it is very likely that these chemicals will help us too. Older people are also much more resistant than young people to radiation damage. And there are other medical interventions to counteract the normal changes of aging. Myostatin is a hormone excreted by skeletal muscles. This hormone causes any muscle not worked to its capacity in the last 72 hours to shrink. We can now block this myostatin, causing us to gain up to 20% muscle mass without any exercise at all. We will still have to do our yoga and stretching to maintain flexibility and strengthen our tendons. But with myostatin inhibitors and intense intermittent exercise, a 70-year-old could arrive at Mars looking pretty darn awesome. For all these reasons, the perfect colonists to help found the Martian colonies will be in their 50s and 60s. Finally, we are able to take cells from a human body and turn them back into stem cells. These stem cells can then be reverted back to pluripotent cells, which can be 3D printed into a gel matrix in zero gravity. The gel can be impregnated with chemicals that tell the stem cells what to become. Blood vessels, kidney tissue, liver tissue, lung tissue. These gels can't hold together in a gravity field. But in zero gravity, we will be able to 3D print new organs as we age. Let me ask you something. If you take a 20-year-old kidney and transplant it into a 60-year-old, does it age faster? Or if you take a 60-year-old kidney and transplant it into a 20-year-old, does it become young again? It turns out that you can transplant an organ from someone in their 70s into a young person, and it works just fine. You can also transplant a young kidney into an older person, and it stays strong. With zero gravity biomedical science, Elon Musk could land on Mars at the age of 70, with another quarter century ahead of him. What is possible after that? We'll cover that in the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. There are links in the description to Patreon and the Academy Store at Astro Proterra.